All right, in this video, I'm going to go through my essential 50 tools for maintenance of your car if you want to fix your own car and keep your car in good condition. First one I've got here is screwdrivers of various assorted shapes and sizes, but my preference is long ones with magnetic tips like these. So a set of them. Next one's a sorted insertable screwdrivers are sort of ball shapes particularly the uh, Phillips lots of different shapes to fit lots of different screws and my preference also is to have a very large wide flat headed screwdriver as well make sure one of those is in your one of your um, as one of your uh, selector balls and even something like this set of screwdrivers that are very short and stubby they're very handy for tight spaces when you've got your hand deep inside an engine and trying to fill it about. What last thing you need is a very long or normal kind of size screwdriver to get in the way. Sorted kind of ring spanners, different sizes. Go for imperial as well as metric because you never know. Your car might have like an imperial nut on it that you have to undo or maybe perhaps the nut has been um, rotted away by the rust so much that you may have to go to the next size up or down which might mean it could be imperial and throughout this I'm going to tally you up more the, the cost and I'm going to give you a rough estimate how much it would cost you might go around individually buying these which are crow's feet and they're quite useful for um, awkward situations so you put this on whatever nut it is open ended usually put um, three quarters or a half an inch usually three quarters on there's been an extension uh, where you can crank and turn awkward looking and precision nuts or you might go for the whole set like this so an assorted crow's feet another set of ring spanners but this time a long and thin and angled both ends these are very 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 handy you might be doing something like a steering rack and there's just no room um, or you might be doing something like a lower control arm and you've got to get to that top nut which you just can't get to normal screwdriver won't give you the leverage or the precision to be able to get to it something like this angle at both ends usually does the trick adjustable spanners they're very useful things like tracking arms keeping them keeping one end steady while you crank and tighten or loosen the other or just using it just just to knock open nuts and bolts uh, that you really need especially in places like the tracking arm you could do with a set of these large medium small a head torch very useful I use this particular model myself it's it's absolutely fine make sure you get rechargeable batteries um, like a wrench spanner but with sorted heads that you can put on these ones here on the left can fit many types of different bolts they're very useful I'll go for something like this a mixture and also I would go for a mixture between uh, half an inch so a set for half an inch a set for three eighths of an inch and um, what I mean by that is the head here and also a quarter of an inch so three sets you need three sets of assorted ones of these and this and this um, wrench ratchet wrench uh, as many as possible really and you may need to go all the way up to the largest one which should be the wheel hub so you'll have to buy the wheel hub uh, socket independently to find out what it is it could be 30 28 32 I think those three are usually the size you want you should buy them independently again have even more but this time uh, probably go three eighths, a half inch, and a quarter. But this time have have a 
have maybe a box of them with very long very long sockets and these look back normal they make you have the long ones and yet again have even more uh, so can't emphasize how many you know you need a large selection of them because you might need to tighten one end while holding another end so you can't just have one thing really so again it's probably three sets of these double up on those um, these are converters they convert between half an inch to three eighths to so this one's going from three eighths to uh, three eighths I think so it's three eighths to a half and half to three eighths and that one there is put oh, I can't read this it says it's three eighths to a quarter so it's sorted ones of these these are wobble bars and I find them a bit more useful and I use them all the time rather than just straight ended ones so you can get away avoiding buying just straight ended ones you've got like a little round bit at the end you can kind of work from a funny angle so that if you're using a large extension you're probably gonna be you be tilting at an angle which is where these come in useful three sets of these uh, or like a set like a complete set like this um, I don't really find useful sometimes you get an extension that looks like a spring they're, they're quite don't really work very well and you might get another set like this and this picture actually kind of shows you how the you would use it so you might get even more of those a hacksaw is really important hacksaw blades are really cheap they're about two pounds for about 20 of them just like a nice thin very simple one for about 2.99 like this will do you fine hacksaw can be very useful when you say taking out your lower ball joint or your tracking ball joint and it's stuck it won't come out you just have to saw the darn thing off um, this is again talk about track end joints ball joints this tool comes in useful slip it in and then crank this pops it open and the other cousin to this is this one uh, so the one on the left so you might end up buying a set of them that looks like this but this one here is useful for the other type of ball joint that you can't get to you need the this kind of fork thing you can buy and this this kind of picture shows you how you use it slip it under but I, tr I if it was me doing now I'll probably slip this um, I would I might not use this tool on this situation because it looks like you're going to bust the rubber gator if you do it like that so you hammer it in and then wedge um, I'll probably try and find use the other tool that I was using a little pop it up from below uh, the the this tool here I'll just sort of wind it until it pops up probably where I would do it and for this end here it's going to slip where this tool is and when you wind it it's not really going to damage it as much I think a nice big hammer or a selection of them make sure one of the heaviest ones is nice and heavy like a 4 pound hammer something like that nice and big rubber mallet these are very useful as well so a nice size that one I quite prefer the ones you use for camping they're the really long handles you can really whack um, say you're trying to take out the drive shaft from the hub you kind of don't want to hit it with something hard you hit it with something soft and not just knock it loose set of pry bars different sizes very very useful prying out drive shafts uh, anything that you need prying out I sorted kind of these kind of grippers pliers long nose pliers and this one this tool there where they kind of 
sharp edge is very useful particularly taking out cock pins I mean I, I used to have one that the years ago before I started fixing cars I could never work out what these were for I thought I was cutting wire but then I find out very useful taking out cock pins and all sorts really it clipped on nicely but I'd probably prefer it with a slightly longer end this one's probably prefer it with a longer end um, so a set of these would be good I'll probably actually have an extra one of these where they've got the flat these plies are the flat ended here and they look a bit sturdier something like this with a kind of square bit here is very useful for gripping kind of awkward shapes that are not round they've got kind of like a perhaps like an hexagonal one them like a bar for example track end joint they're adjustable of course very useful um, the size may be something like 12 inches in length would be quite useful and handy a nice decent set of these multi grips and something like a quality one you have to pay money for something like this and I might even get two of those one with like a rounded end maybe one with a a cut out like the previous picture maybe one with a flat end I'll probably get more than one of these different size and a large one of these for this time I've, I've got this particular tool myself um, this would be more like 20 inches really large one uh, some some you can get with like a curved grip here uh, some with a flat I've got the flat one and the curved one so okay maybe double up on the tools and the very long handle comes in useful and uh, sometimes um although the tool i'm in, the tool i'm talking about next is not included in my list here i'm just going to talk about one of those cargo ratchet things that you ratchet cargo with you've got a long kind of canvas i you i clamp this on and i ratchet it up really really tight and uh, to grip things with sometimes set of these uh, circuit rem circuit clip removers some when you squeeze a the handle they kind of open up uh, so this one when you squeeze the handle closes together this one when you squeeze the handle also close together but it's just the way they're designed sometimes when you squeeze the handle open up as well so make sure you get one of those as well long nose and this one's angled but that's sort of shot from above long nose one of these or t a few of these would do um, sorted angles are long these are about uh, 15 inches in length something like that maybe a bit more more, more like 20 inches in there they're quite very useful and it's got like a plier ed edge nose that you can't really see and the angle I think this one's angling down towards the screen a magnetic pickup for, for you when you lose something down somewhere and that always happens and I always use these these are quite handy when I try and undo nuts and bolts and my hand is right there and I'm trying to undo it I just kind of have that next to it because if I know if it falls this is going to catch it as well rather than just as a pickup I use it actively proactively to pick up things and quite often these have an end attachment you can take off and either put on the magnet or like a little mirror on as well so it doubles up as the sink as a mirror as well to look at things you can't really get to um, a, an extensional ball if there's such a word light extension light whatever you call it a cage around it so it can be knocked around without smashing saying that you probably need like a 25 meter extension cable as well to go with that so a wind up extension cable handheld torch somewhere some of them are magnetic and you stuck to things something like this would be quite handy handheld torch LED lights a nice sturdy jack this one says three tons so these are about just over 100 pounds normally so you need something like this 
a steady strong nice and big and the one that goes really nice and low as well I don't think this one's that low but once you can go low and then pump high as well axle stands you want but a set of three tonners oh yep it says here three, it says here three tons and a set of six tons so when it says three tons it means both of them combined to, uh, take three tons so this one takes a ton and a half but then you want the much the bigger kind of daddy version six ton ones as well and I'm particular, I particularly like this model uh, sorted these uh, extension bars for half an inch um, three eighths the three eighths ones are usually about uh, 60 centimeters long I've got like a half an inch one that is probably about a meter long and a small one for a quarter for a quarter inch one which is probably only about 12 centimeters long assorted ones of these uh, I know you can get these to the end socket wise the one inch I think I remember one inch I never use the end sockets or anything like that. It's about one inch I guess it comes in use when you're fixing trucks but not for cars and I've got when I've gone out looks like I've purchased according to well I'm advising you to purchase some more of these long and um, particularly the long ones we might will be dubbing up on but these ones are the short ones because you want sockets that are particularly short as well as long uh, and it might come in with long as well uh, Torx so T-O-R-X you want the, the the male bit various sizes and the female bit it looks like we've got more male here than female but I would definitely have a full selection of male and female something like this I might I probably will buy but um, you would have thought there would be equal amounts of these and those something like this would be handy or you'd get it with 3 8 end I would have thought set of allen keys and I I will still go for metric and imperial nice large selection of metric nice large selection of imperial again when it goes a bit rusty you can try an imperial and then try to bang it with a hammer and then turn it so of course throw away the uh, screw afterwards and change it for a new one uh, these are cable strippers you put the cable in there kind of feel for it which cable is right and pull away and you're left with the fresh copper underneath these ends cut this is just slip a cable in and it just chops it off uh, these are very useful usually have um cutting edge as well just here a nice uh, nice quality multimeter this one here fluke would be really expensive wouldn't it? it's a proper brand this one probably will only be over 100 I'll probably buy a cheaper version make sure you've got a continuity beeper so you can do uh, so you can you can test where something is like a fuse is whether you can fuse you can see but something it's continuity between two wires there's no break in it so it does AC DC peak hold would be good uh, sometimes there's like a peak value that you can see not not these are all different and different multimeters have different kind of things but unfortunately these days they always miss out miss out certain features and some multimeter is very hard to find one that has everything like they used to do all of them something like this I have this particular model myself scanner uh, you don't need to get a really expensive one something like this would be fine so this is a mono directional scanner it can only read from the car it's error codes and later on when you get into it you, you could get you could get a bi-directional one so you can make your car do things activate things as well as just reading off it so something like this you do it you can read off little graphs you know 
uh, you can have say for example a car running and it will read it will read up a little kind of graph of the pressure over five minutes and it will kind of draw it for you and you can review it uh, if I tick this particular model you can select you can select the things you want to record you know, it could be like pressure meter um, maybe something like uh, if the um, the signal from the oxygen sensors or something like that selection of oil WD-40 is your minimum selection oil you would need contact spray is quite good as well kind of cleans up and improves electrical connections although this could do it as well uh, brake fluid you could you could add brake fluid to that list and electrical contact cleaner which is a fast drying kind of thing you spray on it cleans it they're very good for maths sensors MAFs S sensors it's a selection of these but minimum you need is this and on this list it's like the minimum amount of tools I would use and buy if I would say move to a new house and I wanted to carry on fixing cars without having to go back to my old house or or whatever and take or take it to the garage the funnel very useful clean it out afterwards I'd usually have one for oils one for watery kind of stuff one funnel is clean one funnel if I'm using oil one funnel is really I use it for any kind of thing one funnel I'll keep really clean for things like brake fluid something to catch the oil usually this one's just like a pan usually I have one where it comes in like a large vessel you can close up as well it lays flat looks like a like a jerry can catches oil and you just plug it up and take it to the dump below although those ones there that the little kind of screw that you screw tight usually snaps off as well so it's like a pan like this and then you can pour it in the old uh, container where the oil, fresh oil came from and take that to the dump this one here yeah I guess I didn't include I guess uh, this would be useful removing um, oil filters some sort of tool for that as well angle grinder comes in useful nice thin blade like this this would be expensive this Bosch model but you can get kind of generic ones for about 25 pounds and it's female just as good and getting from screw fit drill you can you can go for kind of cheap brand like this these this would be very good it's high voltage on it that's a lot of power you can get one well, I mean you, you get the cable version is fine as well so a nice drill you can drill things out with your hands I've got both uh, but the essential is probably with this one battery operate one this is a, a uh, from Clark's this is a very useful tool a, um, I can't remember we call these now but uh, but very powerful pressing the trigger left or right and it will undo nuts and bolts very very powerful um, very powerful you need special hard sockets uh, so powerful in fact you got to be careful when you use it you this is as you pull it I think this one's like 500 newton meters plus this one here this model with a cable uh, you press it sometimes it can shred a bolt shred the top of it it's, if the other end still stuck this is like a last resort but very useful very powerful Uh, you need to keep this in your car at all times cross shape <coughs> for removing your hub nuts hub nut uh, removal the ones that look just like a small L not that useful these ones where you can grip it here and say for example that's your hub nut insert it, grip it here, grip it here and turn very unlikely to unput uh, sort of wrench new thread or or kind of hurt the thread that you're doing um, so I would have one of these a nice set of uh, or two of uh, 
these. You can have a high speed steel stick, uh, set, but I always have a good set of cobalt ones as well. Cobalt is what you need to drill in the really high metal. These are really lovely. Probably about twenty-five pounds a pack, full pack. Recently, you've seen my videos. I busted a few off. I think I showed it. Of course, I'm gonna have to go and get a new set. Maybe I can do without these. That's a large vice to attach to your table in your garage. This one looks particularly big, very sturdy. I haven't got this particular model, but something else would be lovely. Quite often, the the ones you buy now have got an end bill just here, so it doubles up as an end bill. Nice, nice uh, sturdy vice. Uh, I don't know, it's got one of the, oh, well, them one's got one, some of these weights in the, in the garage as well. They do weights and just leave them there. Um, and lastly, for all the tools that you would buy, you might buy one or two, three of these toolboxes and shelving space as well. Alright, so probably not 50, but around about 50 essential tools I would have. Starting up my uh, garage, new house, and you don't want to borrow, go back to your mum's or your someone else's house and borrow them. You just want to set up your own. 50 essential tools. Um, please hit the like and subscribe button. And uh, hopefully, when the weather improves, I'll go out and do some more car maintenance. Please hit the like and subscribe if not already subscribed. Um, if you are one of the uh, one of my subscribers watching this, thank you for supporting my channel.